Hi guys, Aviation JFK here, back at you with another video. Today we are going to be doing the second episode in the model comparison series. And as you can see, we are going to be doing the Gemini Jet 737 versus the NG Models 737. Now I'm going to try and give points, or not points, but I'm going to try and evaluate each different section of the model. Um, just to let you know which which I think is better um, and then you can kind of just evaluate evaluate based on the two models side by side so yeah without further ado let's just get straight into this video so for the clarification if you didn't know on the right is the NG models 737 and on the left is the Delta Gemini Jet 737 now I think we should start off with the noses here um, and as you can see both both noses um, don't look really that true to the actual thing um, but I think that NG models has the shape of the nose in terms of the mold much better as the Gemini Jets one has a point if you can see there's like a big point above the above the cockpit and that is not really realistic now in terms of front end detail I think NG also takes the T as they have the nose cone which is displayed much better than the Gemini Jets one now I don't think any of them, or both neither of them have a good cockpit window um, but I do think the NG one is just a bit better because of the way it's placed the one on the Gemini Jets one is actually way too low down um, if it was put up high it would look so much better also, from a top view, the nose of the Gemini Jets one is not as pointy, but is much more rounded on the front side of the nose. Now, moving on to the middle section of the fuselage of both models. Um, here we're starting off with the NG one. Um, I think the join of the wings is absolutely immaculate. It's a really nice join. and there's, You can barely notice that the... Um, wings have been slotted in. I don't even think they have. I think they're just all part of one mold, um, which is really nice. Also, I think the engines are pretty nice, but I do think they're just a tad bit too small because in real life, the NG or the 737 engines are quite close to the ground and they also seem to be a little bit bigger. Now, I also think the antenna and just general overwing detail is something that is really really nice on the NG models aircraft I'll show you a wing view just later on in the episode um, so you can see the wing detail and how much it excels compared to the Gemini Jets one so then here we are with the midsection of the Gemini Jets aircraft now one thing that is instantly picked up when looking at this aircraft is that these wings are bent as if they are in flight and that is something that is very apparent on a model just as small as this. It looks like the sharklets on the tail on the on the wings are above the fuselage <clears throat> which is something that is not realistic to the model. Now I do think the engines as I mentioned before with the NG aircraft the engines are on this one better size than the um, Gemini or than the NG one because the one on the NG model is just too small then that being said I do think that there are quite a few blemishes on the inside of the rim of the engine which I'll show you in the front view of the aircraft but I think NG will take the T just because of the shape of the wings now moving on to the rear section of the models um, I also think that NG takes this the T on this one just because of the amount of detail and how crisp the details are on this model. Now this model here, the one that you're looking at right now, the NG one, has one more antenna just in front of the vertical stabilizer that the Gemini Jets one lacks. I also think that the NG one is better because all these parts are made of metal. On the Gemini Jets one, all these parts um, are very flexible which suggests that they are made from a plastic and then moving on to the Gemini Jets one as I said on the NG one here there is an antenna but not on, on not, not on this model um, and I'll hold this down and show you that these are all plastic parts at the back here that is something that you can't do with the NG one um, as then the parts will break off both models I feel like have substantial amounts of detail and um, 
They both have the tail skid which is under the rear of the aircraft um, and they're both pretty good and pretty nice part of the mold. Now moving on to the bottom section of the aircraft. So I specifically want to focus on the underside between the two main landing gears of the NG models 737. Now this aircraft or this model has a substantial more a substantial amount more detail than the Gemini Jets one as there are two antennas which are located just behind the two main gears which are not present on the Gemini Jets. Now also I know it's a small thing and it doesn't really matter that much but I like how NG does not actually add their logo to the model um, and it just makes it just makes the model f feel way more like real. Also, one thing I do have against this model is the fact that it does not have a stand hole. I think a stand hole is pretty important for a model um, as some people really like to illustrate the fact that their model is either landing or taking off or in flight. It's not the biggest issue but it is still something to consider when buying your model. Also, I just think the overall rivets um, and the rivets, I mean like the overall crispness of all the details on this model especially on the underside are just way better. For example, these things here, well, I'm not exactly sure what they're called. Um, they are way more crisp, way more pointy, um, and they're also a little bit smaller, which is more realistic. On the Gemini Jets one, as I will show you, they are quite a bit bigger and quite covered in paint. Also, the holes and grooves on this model are very, very nice. Um, but yeah, both models have a substantial amount of underside engine detail. So here we are with the underside of the engine or the aircraft or the Gemini Jets one. You can see Gemini Jets have added their small little title at the back here. Um, I'm, I find it nice that they've made it a bit smaller than it used to be. Um, it used to be pretty big and it used to stretch across pretty much the whole bottom of the aircraft. Um, and there's the Delta title and then here is the stand hole. Now as I said, this aircraft does not have the small antennas which just are behind the um, 737 main gear. Also as I mentioned, the grooves on this model are just not as nice as they are on the NG one. These parts here, they're a bit too close together and they are also a bit too big and a bit too rounded. They are not as pointy um, and it just does make it look more like a model than an actual aircraft. Moving on to the engines and front view of the models. So we're taking a look at the engines and wing detail on this model here. Um, as you can see, you can look straight into the engines. All the blades are nice and they are a good part of the mold. Um, as you can see on the inside, there's these little fins. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, um, but those are not present on the Gemini Jets model. Well, they are, but they are very small and they're not very pronounced. Um, also I do notice that the engines on this model are a little bit tilted inwards. Um, it's not too noticeable but it is there. Um, but I do like how everything on this model is very symmetrical unlike the Gemini Jets one. So as you can see already even though not looking at the whole wing you can see that these wings are just angled up at such an aggressive angle it just doesn't make it look good. As I was said before, you can see there's a couple of blemishes on the rims of the engines um, and the blades are not that symmetrical or not that nice of a mould. Overall, it's not the biggest of issues, um, but yeah. Also, the small fins that I was talking about, they are very, very, very small. I don't even know if the camera can pick it up, but they are not pronounced at all. Um, and that, I feel, is partly due to the amount of paint they've added to this model. So here we see the wing detail of the NG models aircraft. I know the focus isn't the best, but the small do not step titles are seen as little black dots um, on this model. Um, but yeah, they are there, and there's something that is not present on the Gemini Jets one. So here, as you can see, it's just the lines on the wings here. You still have the overwing exit markings, but it's overall quite basic compared to the NG models one. So my overall opinion of these two models, um, if you had to buy one of the two, I would definitely go for the NG one, purely because it just has a lot more detail 
that the Gemini Jets one doesn't. Um, a lot of the lines and grooves are way more pronounced on the NG one. And that makes it visible from a distance. As a model is small, you're not always looking at it up close. Um, so this model looks very good from a distance. I mean, the Gemini Jets one isn't terrible, but like the wings are just something that really are not good. Um, I mean, you can bend them, but that's just that defeats the point. Um, <laughs> Also, the only thing I have against the NG1 is really the cockpit window and the size of the engines. I mean, it's not a really big problem. It's only like if you compare the two sizes of the engines together with the Gemini Jets and NG1 that you'll notice it. Um, but yeah, also, I haven't really, I don't really have experience with the Gemini Jets 737-900 or 737-700. Um, I have a feeling those are two different molds. And the noses and like wings and stuff don't look the same. Um, I know NG kind of has their 737s all looking the same. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, please consider subscribing if you're new. We're really close to 500 subscribers. Um, so yeah, it's been Aviation JFK signing off.